welcome to Vision Hub. Today we're going to look at the unit Approaches in Psychology, AQA AS Psychology, and we're going to be looking at the cognitive approach. The cognitive approach assumes that a scientific study should be carried out of internal mental processes. Human behavior that is neglected has to be studied, for example, thinking, memory, perception. And these examples are private processes that have to be studied indirectly by making inferences about what is going on in people's minds from their behavior. There's two types of models. Theoretical models study internal processes. For example, information processing, the information processing approach states that information comes in the system in the stages of input, storage, and retrieval. Computer models are useful when it comes to developing artificial intelligence or thinking machines. The mind is compared to a computer when it comes to the manner in which information is processed. For example, the brain is the central processing unit. There's coding systems that turn in turns into that turn information into more usable forms and there's their stores that hold information. Schemas. A person's expectations or beliefs play a key role in cognitive processing. Schemas are packets of ideas or information that develop from experience and they act as a mental framework for interpreting incoming information received from the cognitive system. Babies are born with simple motor schemas, for example, for innate behaviours like sucking. As you get older, your schemas get more detailed and sophisticated. The purpose of a schema is to help us process a lot of information quickly as they can act as mental shortcuts and prevent us from getting overwhelmed by environmental stimuli. For example, if you see a chair, you would know it has four legs and you can sit on that chair. However, they can be perceptual er errors, which is when schemas can distort our interpretations of sensory information. So Ellis's 1995 Irrational Thinking ABC model explains how irrational thinking causes emotional disorders. So A stands for activating an event, for example, when you see a spider. B stands for beliefs, for example, thinking that the spider will bite you. And C stands for consequences, so you'll, f you'll feel panic or fear. And then we have Beck's 1976 negative triad. So those who think negatively about themselves have negative self schemas, which would, could have developed through negative experiences. So cognitive biases and negative self schemas form the negative triad. So think of it as a triangle. So a triangle that's interlinked. So you have negative views about the world, yourself, and the future. Emergence of cognitive neuroscience. So cognitive neuroscience is a scientific study of the influence the structures of the brain have on mental processing. In the 1860s, Broca found that damage to an area on the frontal lobe can cause impaired speech production. You'll look more into this at A2. Brain imaging techniques, for example, PT and MRI scans give us a greater insight about the brain's neurochemistry and the brain structure. Computer generated models to read the brain and develop mind mapping techniques or brain fingerprinting. Evaluation. A strength is that there's real life applications because this theory can be related to practical and theoretical contexts. For example, robots ultimately being useful and advancing life in the future. It brings together both biology and cognitive psychology to build a perspective, which is beneficial because both schools bring in a lot of research or theory that can enable that can enable constant development. However, a weakness is that the cognitive approach is prone to machine reductionism because computers ignore motivation and the effects of emotions, reducing generalizability as these aspects impact the ability to process information. Another, weak, another weakness is that these concepts are too abstract and theoretical because the studies done to investigate mental processing are done on artificial stimuli so they don't represent daily memory, ultimately reducing mundane realism. In our next video we will be looking at the biological approach of psychology but before then make sure you've made your notes on what we've covered so far. Remember to revise, rest, test and repeat yourself. 
Don't forget to follow us on Instagram. Thank you to Canva because I made these slides using their templates. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment and press that like on our channel Revision Hub. Thank you so much.